Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. All right, you guys, you all loved whenever I did this before for the Halloween fabrics. So I'm back again to talk with you through some of the more important details on how to sew with holiday fabrics. So I ran over to Joanne, I grabbed a whole bunch of different types of fabrics that you might be sewing with to make your holiday dress, make some outfits for a party or a family gathering or anything like that. And I'm gonna be showing you today best practices on how to work with each of those fabrics. Okay, first up, we have this really beautiful stretch polyester. They had this in a ton of different prints, and I think it's really beautiful with this really great sheen. And if you're making like a fit and flare dress situation, this kind of fabric is perfect because it has a little bit of give to it. It would also make for really, really great festive holiday pencil pants. Consider that, although some people call them cigarette pants, I call them pencil pants because if you have a pencil skirt, you should be able to have a pencil pants and I don't support smoking and nicotine. <laughs> Anyways, um, it's just really, really beautiful. So first things first, I am going to show you which needles you should be using for each of the fabrics. This one, like I said, is a stretch polyester. So we are going to be going to our Microtex slash sharp needles. And it's kind of a mid-weight fabric. It definitely has some kind of heft to it. So I am going to be using size 80 for this one. Also, it is, um, it does fray a little bit on the sides. You can see it's definitely pulling apart. So you wanna make sure that you serge your raw edges if you are um, leaving your garment unlined. So it should be able to go through your serger with regular uh, polyester thread and make sure that you have your Microtex size 80 needles in the serger as well. I have my Alisso iron here set up to the synthetic setting. It's one of the lighter heats that they have. And because this is pretty much all polyester with some spandex in it as well, uh, we want to keep the heat really, really low. And then we also want to ping back the steam to the next to the lowest setting. So not no steam, just a little bit of, bit of light steam. And my iron light is green, so that means that it is warmed up and ready to go. So we are just going to press this guy very, very gently, trying to move the iron, picking it up, putting it down like so, and then grab your um, Taylor's clapper. This is the one from Cottage Lane that I've been using that has the really cool um, pin cushion in it. But you just wanna press that down Go over it a couple times just to make sure that you're getting a little bit of heat and a little bit of steam. And then put the Taylor's clapper over it again and press it down like so. And then from the other side, you will see you have a beautifully pressed um, seam. And you want to make sure that you don't use too high of a heat here uh, because this will burn. And when polyester burns, it uh, changes color kind of. It almost becomes like super, super shiny. And I don't know, like if plastic were to melt, you know what that looks like? So that's what we would be dealing with with that. But like I said, this is a beautiful fabric and it's super easy to work with if you take the time to do these few little special touches. Okay, next up we have this really super cool perforated pleather fabric. So pleather is plastic. It's pretty much like a stretchy water bottle. <laughs> um, perforated leather is really cool because it has all these little holes all on the inside, which is really, really nice. And I think that Pleather and other synthetic leathers are really great in the winter time because it's very insulating and very hot and very sweaty. So wearing this stuff when the temperatures are above like 70 degrees would just be so uncomfortable to me. 
So that's why I like them for the holiday season. Again, you can make a really cute like fit and flare dress. You can make a uh, pleated skirt. You can make a pencil skirt. All of those would be really wonderful. The holes are super, super small. So you don't technically have to line it, but if it would make you more comfortable by all means, line it. You can line it with a polyester because like I said, this ain't breathing anyways. <laughs> so there's no sense in having a breathable lining just for no reason. Okay, so sewing with this, they actually make needles just for leathers. And this one's pretty lightweight in terms of leather. I mean, it's all relative. So I would recommend a 70 or 80 size leather needle. And the leather needles are just going to be thicker and they're going to be super, super sharp to make sure that they can penetrate the layers of the leather. Also, the leather, because it's plastic and not woven and, or knit in any way, is not going to fray. So don't worry about running this through your serger or finishing the seams at all. It's completely unnecessary. And when it comes to pressing this, you really want to try to not press it at all. But if you have to press it, here's how I do it. You're going to need a couple of tools. One is a pressing cloth and two is this really nifty thingamajig from Clover. I think it's called like a pressing wheel. I'll have it linked in the description box for you. But essentially what you can do with this is apply pressure to the seams that you don't want to apply any heat to at all. And it will kind of hold it in place a little bit. I mean, this isn't heated, this wheel. It's just plastic, but the pressure alone acts as like a finger press situation and will slightly put an indention into your fabric where you don't want to place heat. So you can see that seam is kind of laying a little bit flat. It's not super perfect, but if you wanted to apply some heat Again, take your pressing cloth. I have mine doubled up two layers and leave your iron on the synthetic setting and we want no steam, no steam at all because it's plastic and the steam is just going to bubble up on top and not penetrate the fabric anyways. So keep it super, super light, press down for a few seconds at a time and lift up, press down, lift up, and do this a few times, keep touching the fabric, make sure it's not getting too, too, too hot. Okay, and then when you peel it back, you can see it's a little bit flatter and we can trap some of that heat in with the Taylor's clapper and then you can go over it again with your roller, okay? And so there you have it. Again, they're not ever going to lay super, super flat. Um, if you want super, super flat seams, my recommendation would be to top stitch on either side of all of your seams with a matching thread. And that will look really cool and be the best way to have super, super flat seams. But if you don't wanna do that and have that detail on your fabric or on your garment, um, super, super light heat and no steam. And a lot of these extra tools and time and patient is gonna be your best bet for something like stretch pleather. Okay, so next is probably my favorite fabric while I was in the store. I was like, I don't really know if this goes with my red and green theme, but I love this fabric so much that I am including it. It is a metallic French terry. How cool is that? So it's 100% cotton with this metallic thread running through it. And you guys, it is seriously very stunning in the light. I'm kind of losing my natural light here, but um, it is really, really beautiful. And animal print is still all the rage. This monochromatic situation is really, really beautiful. You could do everything from like a dressed up sweatshirt to like a dressed up hoodie. Imagine like a zip top hoodie out of something like this. That would sell for hundreds of dollars in the in the ready to wear stores. It's really, really beautiful. And bonus, because it's French Terry, you're probably a little bit familiar with working with it already. It's 100% cotton. We love 100% cotton. The metallic threads are so small that you are probably not even going to notice them. 
You do not have to serge this because it's a knit and it's not going to fray. Uh, for your machine needles, you are going to want to use either a large ballpoint jersey needle, like the size 90, or the size 90 Microtex sharp needle. Just depends on what you've got on hand, really. The sharp needle is gonna be a little bit sharper, which actually might be better for the metallic threads. So if I had to pick one, I would say size 90 Microtex needle. And then just go to your machine and do your regular stretch stitch, usually maybe a number four, you know, the one that looks like a lightning bolt, and you're good to go. I mean, you can serge this if you want to, just to keep the insides nice and pretty, but you definitely don't have to, which is nice. Now for pressing, let me show you how I'm going to press this. Okay, so since this one is made from cotton and metallic thread, we can really crank up the heat to the highest setting here, as well as the steam. Crank up the heat, crank up the steam. It's pretty much impossible to burn cotton, and the metallic threads really are just going to kind of conduct that heat a little bit. Um, because it's not a polyester thread, uh, it won't melt, it's just metallic. So crank it up as high as it goes. And then if you want to be on the safe side, which we should always err on the side of caution, put your um, pressing cloth down, just one layer of it. Make sure that's nice and flat underneath. And then my iron is a green light, so I'm ready to go. Okay, and then I'm going to pull this back really quickly. It's already nice and flat, but I'm just going to seal that in a little bit more, give it more of a permanent press with my Taylor's clapper. Beautiful. All right, next up, how beautiful is this? It looks like tin foil. I absolutely love this. It's got a ton of stretch to it. So you could easily make a fully fitted bodycon dress and it would be stunning. You would look like liquid metal. Um, but you could also use it because it's very drapey as well. You could also use it um, like a fit and flare, a circle skirt would be beautiful, anything like that. I truly love this fabric so much. So it is very, very stretchy. Um, but it's also got this, you know, sheen to the top of it. The sheen is made from polyester and metal and, you know, a lot of synthetic type of things. So we need to take that into account whenever we head to our sewing machine. So I'm going to recommend a size 80, like a mid weight, um, stretch needle for this stretch fabric. The stretch needle is going to make sure that it's able to stretch at the seams, which you obviously still really want. And the size 80 because it's kind of like a mid weight knit after you have all of this stuff applied to it. You can see that you do not need to serge it. Nothing is fraying. Nothing is coming undone at all. I mean, unless you just want pretty insides, you don't necessarily, you don't have to serge it. Um, and then when it comes to pressing, let me show you how I would press this. It's so pretty. <laughs> okay, so something like this that is stretchy as well as metallic, we want to treat with care. Well, actually all of these fabrics we're kind of treating with care. They are all very specialized, but you can tell that it kind of already wants to lay flat, which is working to our advantage, which is really, really nice. Like we're already halfway there with this. So we're gonna use our pressing cloth again because these little speckly parts are all like metallic and plastic and um, will easily melt. Definitely could stick to the plate of your iron for sure. So we are gonna do synthetic heat again, no steam whatsoever. And we are just going to apply a little bit of heat to this and lift it up, make sure it's not getting too hot. And when we peel it back, you can tell we've got a beautiful flat seam. It looks lovely. All right, now I have this kind of funky take on a crushed 
velvet. So it is a crushed velvet that has been processed in a way where all of these wrinkles are going to stay locked in, kind of like a gauze. And I just think this would make the most beautiful like tiered dress or like a maxi skirt would be really stunning. Um, anything along those lines. It's not stretchy at all. So I wouldn't recommend anything tight, but something with some I don't know, a lot of volume to it, I think would be really, really pretty. And you also want to make sure you treat this like a stripe because all of these like wrinkles are creating what will look like a stripe um, once you have it, you know, all around your body. But it is so, so cool. I want a maxi skirt out of it so bad. But um, okay, so some things to keep in mind. This is essentially velvet. So if you've ever worked with velvet before, you probably know what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> velvet can be a little bit tricky. It does not love to stay together um, when you're taking it through your sewing machine. It wants to be really slippery and to move around. It has something called nap, which means the fibers all run one way. And if you have the fibers going the other way, it can create a variation in the fabric, mostly in terms of like color and depth. But because the nap runs one way, it can be very slippery going the, with the nap and can create a lot of resistance going against the nap. So it doesn't love to stay in place whenever you're putting it through your machine and you have the feed dogs on the bottom. So when you get over to your machine, I recommend that you use a walking foot. A walking foot is going to create feed dogs on the top and feed dogs on the bottom. So it's pushing the fabric through the top layer and the bottom layer at the same time, which kind of helps keep it together. Needle wise, because this is not a stretch fabric, we are gonna use a universal needle. I would recommend size 80 uh, because it is like a mid-weight uh, velvet type of fabric. You don't have to serge it. You can see that the edges are not fraying. Um, but you obviously can if you want the insides to be really pretty. But if you're just doing like a maxi skirt like me, don't worry about pressing the inside or don't worry about surging the insides at all. But all right, so we're going to talk about pressing and how to press this fabric and ensure that you keep all of these little wrinkles in there and not burn the velvet because velvet's kind of easy to burn. Okay, so for something like this that is super textured, but also made of synthetic materials, we really wanna make sure that we don't disrupt the texture that's here. Don't flatten it out too much. Don't press out these beautiful, like, I don't know, wrinkles really that are in the fabric already, but you also don't want this to burn. When velvet burns, it becomes very, very shiny very noticeable. Um, you can really tell a big difference um, in the burnt sections versus the not. So the trick with this is again, we're going to use our um, pressing cloth and we only need one layer of it. And I'm going to use on my iron settings, again, the synthetic setting, but I'm going to crank up the steam because this fabric will take some steam, I'd rather it get hot from the steam than hot from the metal plate. Does that make sense? And we're gonna do it in small bursts. Oh, yeah. Again, keep checking the fabric, making sure it's not too hot. It should never be too hot for you to leave your hand on it not just put it down and lift it back up, but to leave your hand down, that's the kind of temperature that we're going for. And just lift and press and get some of that steam in there. And when we peel this back, you can see we have a beautiful flat seam. I am obsessed with this fabric and the seams are hidden so beautifully you can't even see them. So that's the way I would press out this, um, uh, velvet. Okay, so I also picked up red suede. How hot would this be as like a moto jacket, 
velvet blazers are, or I'm sorry, suede blazers are like all the rage right now. That would be stunning. You could make a suede, a red suede blazer and wear it over a little black dress and be ready to go for the holidays in a cinch. So some things to keep in mind with suede. Uh, it does have a nap meaning all of the fibers run one way. And then if you do it the other way, it creates a variation in the color. Let me see if I can get that to show really well. Hold on. Okay. I hope this shows up. So can you see, you probably can't see all this annoying sunlight right here is a line where all the nap is going one way above it. And all the nap is going another way below it. Can you see it better from far away? Okay, well, I promise it's there. <laughs> so you need to keep that in mind whenever you're cutting out your pattern. A lot of times they'll have, the cutting charts will have with nap or without nap. So make sure you're paying attention to that because if you have like your left side of your blazer with the nap going one way and your right side of your blazer with the nap going the other way, as you wear it and things touch you, it's gonna look like one side is darker and the other side is lighter. It's gonna look like two different fabrics. But if you have them all going the same way, then no matter how you get touched, it'll always look the same. It doesn't matter if the nap goes up or down, although with suede, most people like for it to feel nice and smooth when you press down your body. But if you mess up and do it the other way, no one will know just as long as they're all the same. Okay, so you obviously don't need to serge suede at all. Um, and then when you get to your sewing machine, the wrong side of your suede is smooth, but it's got a lot of traction. So when you put it on your plastic sewing machine table, it is going to create a lot of resistance as it's being pulled through the sewing machine. So the way that I like to get around doing that is by taking like parchment paper or something like that and wrapping it around the table of your sewing machine up to your sewing plate. And that way it'll help it be nice and smooth and it'll help, you know, pull it through nice and easy. You can also double ensure that it goes through evenly by using a walking foot so that the feed dogs are on top of your fabric and on the bottom and being fed through at the same rate. Um, you do want to be careful because uh, pins and even wonder clips, anything that's going to cause an indention in the fabric might show. So just be careful to keep your pins and your clips and all of that within the seam allowance. And then when you get to your sewing or when you get to your um, yeah sewing machine and you're looking for a needle, um, you could go to the leather side of things and do like a lighter weight leather needle, like a size 90 or 80, or you could do your universal needle in a larger size, like 80 or 90. Just depends on what you have. Uh, but obviously pressing suede can be a little bit tricky. <laughs> so let me show you how I do it. So the suede is similar to the pleather, but also sort of like the velvet. So it's not plastic. Well, I mean, it is plastic, but it's not plasticky like the pleather is. It's a polyester similar to the velvet. So we are trying to kind of marry the concepts between those other two fabrics. So when I'm going to press this, again, I'm going to go with a super, super light, heat, the synthetic heat here, and I'm going to ping back my steam to just about nothing. I am going to use the pressing cloth, one layer, and get that nice and flat. And then I'm going to lay my iron on top of it for a few seconds. And then go in with the Taylor's clapper. We didn't use the Taylor's clapper on the velvet because we didn't want all of those um, beautiful wrinkles to get pressed out. So again, with a little bit of heat, we're just gonna alternate heat, Taylor's clapper, heat, Taylor's clapper, until we get it flat like we like it. So you can see it's kind of getting there. If you keep going a couple more times, we will be able to get that nice and flat. 
All right, and there we go. Super flat, super beautiful um, suede seam. You know how normally we save the best for last? <laughs> well, I saved the worst for last. And that is this really beautiful sequin paillette combo on mesh. So it is really beautiful. You can see how it shimmers in the light. It would make a beautiful top. I do recommend for fabrics like this, a garment with as few seams as possible. I mean, I'm talking like a top with a straight bodice and maybe a set in sleeve, maybe even a grown on sleeve. Uh, the back is cut on the center fold. I'm talking very, very few seams because your very first step is to go through all of your seam allowances and rip away all of the sequins and the paillettes. It's very tedious. It's very annoying. It's very messy, but that's the right way to do it. You really don't want to sew through these paillettes, especially because they are so large. Um, but your machine isn't going to like sewing through the little sequins either. I mean, it's basically penetrating uh, plastic every single time. And like you wouldn't sew through like a plastic bottle. So you really shouldn't be sewing through these either. The beauty of it is though that because <laughs> there's a silver lining, because it is on a netting, you don't have to surge anything. Nothing is going to fray. Nothing is going to come away. So once you are able to um, take away all of the sequins from the seam allowances, you should be good to go. And it'll be very simple and very straightforward after that. Um, as far as cutting those, I did want to point out, grab your worst, cheapest, nastiest pair of scissors because you are going to be cutting through some of the sequins. And again, cutting through plastic, your fancy uh, cutting shears are not going to like that. So go ahead and um, just grab your cheap scissors, be prepared maybe even to throw these away after you're done because you're gonna be cutting through a lot of plastic. And when you get to your machine, you are going to want to use a very small, fine needle. Essentially, you're only sewing through the mesh. If you've taken out all the sequins and paillettes, like I'm recommending, then all you should be sewing through is the mesh. So you want a really, really small needle. You could even use a universal, that would be fine. A universal size 70. If you have one smaller than that, even better. And then on top of all of that, all of those <laughs> little tips and tricks, you don't even need to press this stuff. So because it's on the netting, because it's made of plastic or the paillettes and the sequins are, um, it's really going to lay fairly flat. The netting is very thin compared to the portion that has all of the sequins still on it. So it's going to want to lay flat naturally. And I did sew through a couple of the paillettes just for illustration. And you can see my sewing machine was able to sew through them, but you don't want that against your skin. That is what is going to create such an itchy situation on the inside and it's not going to be worth it. Now, that I'm saying that this is mesh and it is see-through, so I'm guessing you'll be lining this, but still, that's just not that's just not the way to do it. You don't want that sticking out of your seams all over the place. That it could even like poke through the lining, I think. I don't know. They're like sharp little plastic things. So to try and avoid that, remove all of those uh, sequins and paillettes from your seam allowances. But no pressing, no surging and use your worst scissors. Those are my best tips for like sequins on netting. But like I said, it is really, really beautiful. And wouldn't that make like the most gorgeous top? All right, you guys, that is gonna do it. Those are my recommendations for these holiday type of specialty fabrics. If you have questions or are curious about different types of fabrics that you might be using the holiday season, like brocade, for example, be sure to check out the same exact format video that I did before on Halloween fabrics. I will have it linked up here. It'll also be in the description box. If you love any of the fabrics that I showed or demonstrated with today, I will have those linked in the description box as well. They all came from Joanne. 
And I'll also have my Alisso iron linked as well. So you can check the description box for the link, but also for a coupon code. So if you're looking to up your iron game and your pressing game, now is a really great time to do it. And you can use my code to save a little bit of money. So yeah, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a blast making all of your holiday outfits. I can't wait to start seeing them all on social media. But I will see you all very soon. Bye.